Action Production Center of Troy University's broadcast and digital network and Troy campuses around the world. This is Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. We're glad you joined us for this look at what's happening in and around Troy University. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Well, some Dothan area community college students may now be more likely to get a degree thanks in part to an agreement between Wallace Community College and Troy University. Alan Bruce has the details. On Tuesday morning, Troy University signed its third reverse transfer agreement with a state community college. The newest agreement is with Wallace Community College in Dothan. Through reverse transfer, students who transfer to Troy will still be able to get credit toward their associate's degree from Wallace even if they transfer before finishing their associate's program. Now this benefits the students in many, many ways because for those who for some reason do not complete the baccalaureate, they don't have a credential, this provides them with a credential that will be very useful to them. Also though, it gives that community college the, the uh, credit that they deserve for the work that they have done in moving that student forward. Uh, if, if the student leaves and, and we don't get that degree, then it kind of creates the impression well, that somehow that person may have dropped out and that's not the case. And so this is a win-win. The president of Wallace is happy that students from her school get a chance to expand their opportunities. It aids the student. The student is the beneficiary of all that we're doing today. Certainly they are going to be rewarded for their achievements, whether they uh, complete with us, complete a degree with us and go directly into the workforce, or whether they transfer to the university because in time to come, they may decide they need an associate degree even if they transferred without one. Troy Chancellor Jack Hawkins feels that a program such as this will be beneficial not just to the individual student, but to the community as well, especially in healthcare, which is a field that sees a large number of graduates in the Dothan area. As I've said so many times uh, in this community, uh, if you're in a clinic or in a hospital and you're looking up, you want to make sure that there's either a Troy or a or Wallace graduate looking back at you <laughs> because uh, they're well prepared and, and well attuned to the needs of the, of the patients. Alan Bruce, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Troy has signed other reverse transfer agreements with Southern Union and Wadley and LBW in Andalusia. When Troy University's music department started the All Steinway Initiative this year, and Amy Austin gives us a look at the plan and the two newest Steinways on Troy's campus. Troy University's Department of Music started the All Steinway Initiative in March of this year. The reason behind choosing the Steinway brand is because they are the best. When we talk about the piano world, and then we know the Steinway is the best. And the reason they're best is because they have been setting up the um, compromise standard for that piano. Usually when they build one grand piano, it takes probably about an year and buy almost like a 300 highly trained people to build that. The initiative was started in order to have 34 Steinway pianos throughout the music department and to give students the best resources available. Troy University, our goal is always like uh, provide the best to the students. And of course, we want to provide a really good instrument. And we talk about piano, what's the first Steinway? So becoming an all Steinway school, it's not only make us look good. It's always, it's like kind of like a proof evidence it shows that Troy want to provide the best of best instrument to the students. And Troy has already started purchasing the new Steinways. The two sitting in Long Hall are the first ever of their kind in the world. We have the, the first two, Sterling Silver, a Steinway concert grand, model D, which is a nine foot long, and another one is model B, which is seven foot long concert grand in Troy. And actually they are the first two sterling silver, nine foot and seven foot long in the world. And we, Troy University, we own them. And that's a huge, huge and a big step for us on our process to becoming an Austin school. Amy Austin, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The Steinway Initiative is still in progress as the music department looks to raise the rest of the money to purchase the other pianos. And last Friday, teachers from all over Alabama came together at Troy University to try to gain a deeper knowledge of World War I. Casey Freeman has the story. This year marks the centennial of World War I and a group of teachers came together in order to learn more information about the war for their students. A program called SUPER and it's a 
uh, Schools and University Partner in Education Renewal, SUPER. And with this program, we have a series of programs, mostly in the summer, that teaches, gives teachers the opportunity to get subject matter expertise. Some teachers feel as though this information has been valuable for them, and they look forward to continue educating their students. As far as tweaking the information, a lot of, some of the stuff I'm already using, um, and I was kind of surprised that it was considered information that wasn't widely used, but um, I'm getting a lot deeper insight into what's going on, and so especially with my honors or advanced classes, I'm going to be able to give them more, and we're going to be able to do more with that. Although this seminar is about the world, they also provided some information a little bit closer to home. Where I produced um, a presentation on Alabama during World War I, the home front, with a little bit of a background um, about the western front in particular. And then we have a guest scholar, and that uh, guest scholar changes uh, depending on where we are. This is only one part of the series, and the SUPER program is looking forward to continuing early next year. Casey Freeman, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The seminar was the first of a four-part history series presented by the Alabama Humanities Foundation. And on Wednesday afternoon, Troy University students learned about the history of banned books as a part of Troy University's Big Read program. Jordan Elston has the story. Troy University wants to encourage students to start reading, and one way they are doing that is through celebrating Banned Book Week. Well, this is Banned Book Week here in the United States, and so we're making awareness to all the students about the banned books. And today in particular, we're having a sign up where the kids can stop by and see if they've read any banned books, put their name down, and then put the name of the book that they've read. There are many reasons why a book may be deemed banned, but that doesn't stop students from reading them, whether it be just because they want to or the book is assigned. One of these banned books that you may be familiar with Troy's Big Read Fahrenheit 451. You heard it right, our Big Read Fahrenheit 451 is a banned book. The reading banned books seems to be a popular hobby among Troy faculty and students. I was able to have a few people tell me their favorites. To Kill a Mockingbird. The His Dark Materials series. And Catcher in the Rye. Uncle Tom's Cabin. And one flew over the cuckoo's nest. At 13 Reasons Why. At the Glass Castle. Desperation. The Red Badge of Courage. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, A Farewell to Arms. The university has many things planned for the week and encourages everyone to come out and participate. The faculty are going to be talking about some banned books that they've read and some things that they like about it. But the library, I think, has some stuff going most of the week. Jordan Elston, Troy, Charge and Vision News. Troy University students had the chance to experience some culture on the quad Tuesday as some of Troy's international students celebrate a holiday important to their homeland. Hannah Galloway has the story. Tuesday afternoon, Troy students and faculty came together to celebrate Saudi Arabia's Independence Day. Really a wonderful opportunity. The Saudis in particular do such a nice event uh, once a year like this out on the quad. Through the celebration of their Independence Day, students and faculty alike experience the taste and sounds of Saudi Arabia. We have a special event today, which is uh, Saudi National Day, and uh, it's a big event in Saudi Arabia. It's the 84th annual celebration. We're also offering information about our culture, and also we have a food, which is traditional food in Saudi Arabia. On the other side, we have a fashion for men and women. Also, we have uh, a divan which people are sitting down and enjoy. This event on the quad allowed all students to build relationships with students of another culture. Talking with the students about who they are, about their families and their culture. One American student uses this event to reach out to international students. I have a conversation partner who's a part of this and so I saw him and I thought I'd come say hey. In the eyes of one Saudi Arabian student, Tuesday's event was a success. There is like a good number of uh, people that are coming. This Saudi Arabian celebration is one way that Troy's international program brings students together. Each of the cultures that come to Troy want to have an opportunity to share that culture and when the groups are large enough they often they are able to present in this fashion um, their, either their national days or something about their culture. Hannah Galloway, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Short break, but when we return, we'll see what's going on in Trojan sports. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. 
As a professional soccer player, I know how rewarding sports can be and how quickly injuries happen. So I've teamed up with the American Association of Orthodontists to ask athletes to play it safe. With my years of training, I know what it takes to become an expert, and orthodontists do too. They're the experts who help people obtain healthy, beautiful smiles. Wear mouth guards, face masks, and helmets to prevent injuries. Keep smiling and visit braces.org. Now, more of the award-winning Troy Trojan Vision News. The Trojan soccer team's winning streak is still going strong after two victories over the weekend. The Trojans are now a program-best eight-game winning streak after defeating Francis Marion in North Florida in the Jaguar Classic in Mobile. And even though the Trojans are riding high, head coach Jason Hamilton said the weekend was tough competition for his team. Tougher weekend than we would have liked it to have been. Um, two teams that we... We're confident that we could get two wins against, um, but you know, just not be complacent having been on such a good, good win streak here. So, um, two, you know, I think looking at a paper on stats, you would think that the games were, were pretty much in hand. But we saw some things that you know, obviously we want to improve on going into the conference. Um, the Francis Marion game on Friday was great because it allowed us to uh, to get some players some minutes and, and more importantly get some players some rest, knowing that Sunday's game was going to be tough. The soccer team starts conference play this weekend as they head to Mobile to take on South Alabama. And the Trojan football team took on Georgia on Saturday and started with lots of energy, but the Bulldogs proved to have more fight throughout the game. Amy Alston gives us the details. Troy took on number 13 Georgia and was not prepared for the tough SEC team. Georgia defeated the Trojans 66 to nothing. We got a lot of work to do, obviously. Uh, you know, University of Georgia is a SEC team. I've often said that when you go to an SEC venue, normally you find an SEC team. Well, this probably is an exceptional SEC team. Uh, you know, I know they've, got, they've had some question marks about maybe a couple of players, but the quarterback looks like he's good enough to do whatever they want to do. We were basically unable to do very much. Uh, in stopping them, we were basically unable to move the ball on them. And, uh, you know, we even gave up some things uh, in the special teams, which is we've been decent at. The score was 45 to nothing going into halftime. And while the players had the possibility to give up, none of them would do that to the team. I never believe in quitting or giving up on my team. That's the main thing that we try to make sure we didn't give up or quit and just lay down for them guys. They just, they made a lot of adjustments and made it tough for us. I mean, that's one of the best teams in the country. So they made it really hard for us a lot, but I don't, I don't feel like people quit necessarily. Uh, they just got, got down on each other a little bit, but they tried every, everybody that got in the game, they gave their all as we looked at film. So. I can't really say that anybody quit on us. We showed that we had heart. You know, we came out, we, we played excited. We was happy to be there, you know. We all came, we was as, we, we all took it as a team. We we never separated. At halftime, we didn't we didn't argue with each other. We didn't we didn't get on on each other. We came back out in the second half and gave it our best. The 66-point deficit was the largest margin of loss for the Trojans in the Larry Blakeney era. And after a good start to the season, the Trojan volleyball team has struggled as of late, including a five-match loss at home on Sunday. Khadija Torbert has the details. The Detroit volleyball team hosted a Sunbelt newcomer Sunday in Trojan Arena against unbeaten Abolition State. The Trojans entered the match 5-0 at home this season. The Trojans would have made history by tying Troy Division I era record of six straight home victories. Coach Sonny Kirkpatrick explains more. Wish we would have played harder in the first two games. We had an opportunity to do something that we've never done in the, the history of the program and uh, let it go through our fingers. Disappointed, uh, disappointed because we, we knew as a coaching staff what was going to go into it. Uh, and we tried to convey that to the, to the players and they didn't come out the first two games to do what we had asked them to do. 
when they actually started doing the things that we'd asked them to do, then the results kind of came for themselves. So I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed for them. Kirkpatrick says with the weekend that the team has faced, a break from each other will be much needed in preparations for their next home game Friday, and changes will be made. That's, that's one less game that we have to play. And we can think if I would have only done this, it's too late. We're, we're going to, uh, to change a couple things in practice. Uh, they, have, they have the day off tomorrow, which is something that they need right now, just with the, with the week we've had. So it'll be good to see them on Tuesday. It'll be good for everybody to kind of get away from each other for a little while and, and take a, a day and a half to kind of decompress a little bit until we get back in here. He also expects a great turnout from the fans Friday. You know, we, we've got great fans, so I would support nothing less. Khadija Torbert, Troy, Trojan Vision Sports. The Trojans return to Trojan Arena this weekend for a pair of Sunbelt matches against Arkansas State and Texas State. And the Trojan football team will take the field against Louisiana Monroe this weekend. And in that game, as they have in each of their games this season, the Trojans are honoring a teammate who died in the offseason. Amy Austin gives us a look at how the team is remembering Jadarius Garner. A tragic accident took one of the Troy University football players earlier this year. Jadarius Garner was an important part of the Trojan team and had an impact on the other players. Great friend, great person to talk to. You know, we played the same position. So, and I was just arriving here when he was, he had been here for a while. So, more like a um, good person to talk to when I didn't know what to do with some things. And he was very smart too in school. So, that helped a lot too. I actually got a lot of time. I got to spend a lot of time with him. You know, uh, living with someone, you actually learn, you know, who they really are. And, um, you know, spending night and day around you, you know, he was a very, he was a very, he was a person that uh, his spirit touched everyone he was around. So, you know, um, you know, me and G always talked about being on the field together. You know, he was always excited and full of life. In remembrance of number 55, the players chose to add stickers to their helmets that is a jersey with his number on it. This way, they said they have him with them throughout the season. It's kind of like it's like that kind of remembrance for him. You know, he's always here with us no matter what. You know, and you know, if we're ever feeling down or tired during a game, you kind of got to remember how how would he play during this play or how would he be right now at this moment. That's just a reminder of G's presence. You know, whenever I take my helmet off and look at it, you know, it reminds me of number 55, and uh, it was real important. He's still a member of this team and that uh, we haven't forgot about him, that he always going to be a part of us. And for Troy's first game of the season against UAB, the captains for the game carried Garner's jersey out to the coin toss to mark him as an honorary captain. Uh, it meant a lot, you know, <clears throat> um, just taking it out there, kind of uh, get a presence of him being with us for that first game. So it, it, uh, it was really important to do that. It touched me, it just let me know that he always going to be with us no matter what, that we play with, play with his own spirits or whatnot. So that just let me know that he's there. Amy Austin, Troy, Trojan Vision Sports. The Trojans open up conference play and hope to break their four-game losing streak when they take on Louisiana Monroe this weekend. We're going to take another quick break, but when we come back, there's some offerings from our friends at Troy Public Radio, so don't touch that dial. Today, we gather to recognize the selfless decision of one of the most influential women of our time. The woman who, after having one too many drinks, chose not to drive home buzzed. Here today to honor Rachel is the family whose lives she spared. Troy Trojan Vision News. 
Each week we take some time to hear some of the work done by our broadcast partners at Troy Public Radio. This week we'll get another sample of Talk of Troy, the student produced newscast of Troy Public Radio. Now, let's take a listen. It's the Talk of Troy. Voices and sounds from the campuses of Troy University. I'm Katie Ganaway. Thursdays on the Troy campus is when you may find a student with their head buried in the school newspaper, The Tripolitan. And as producer David Cadell reports, this 80-year-old institution has weathered some interesting times. Journalism professor Steve Stewart is advisor to The Tripolitan, but not its censor. The students make the editorial decisions. I help them to be professional about it and encourage them to be fair and consider all sides, but it's their decision what they publish. In the past, the TROP has even made history for its involvement in a precedent-setting court case for college journalists. In the 60s, a student named Gary Dickey wrote an editorial. The university directed him not to publish it, and instead he published a blank space with the word censored placed across it. He sued the university, and Judge Frank Johnson ruled in his favor. The Tropolitan is published and distributed every Thursday and is available 24 hours a day at tropnews.com. For the Talk of Troy... I'm David Cadell. In order to promote reading in the Troy community, Troy University has added its name to the National Endowment for the Arts Big Read Program. Librarian Rachel Hooper says she hopes this program will give them a love for reading and see that there are other people out there like them. As part of the initiative, Troy's campus library was host to a discussion on select banned books. And Professor Michael Orlovsky spoke about one reason the Kurt Vonnegut novel, Slaughterhouse-Five, is contested. Some of the scenes are minimally sexually explicit. Certainly less obscene than Miley Cyrus twerking at the MTV Awards. <laughs> for more information on upcoming events, just search for Troy Big Greed on Facebook. You've been listening to The Talk of Troy. I'm Katie Ganaway. This show is a production of Troy Public Radio. Throughout the week, Troy Public Radio can be heard on 89.9 in Troy and Montgomery, 88.7 in Dothan, and 91.7 in Phoenix City. And it's time for our last break, but when we return, we'll learn more about Troy's Big Read program. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere will bring us wireless emergency alerts. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. This is Dr. Daniel Smith. He's an expert in domestic and international economics. But his proudest achievement is connecting with his students and helping them accomplish more than they ever thought possible. That's the warrior spirit, and it's alive and well at Troy University. Feel it at troy.edu slash spirit. Now, more of the award-winning Troy Trojan Vision News. Book event for Troy's Big Read program. Well, recently I had the chance to speak with Troy's Dean of First Year Studies about all the activities planned for the program. Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Darren Taylor. Today we'll be talking about the Big Read and this year's book, uh, part of it, Fahrenheit 451. We'll get more into the book later, but uh, my guest today is Hal Fulmer, Dean of First Year Studi Studies here. And uh, Hal, thanks for joining me thanks, today. Thanks, Aaron. Good to be back. And uh, we're talking about the big read. Uh, obviously, people familiar with Troy know that we have a common reader program uh, where students are encouraged to read a book. But uh, this year's common reader, which happens to be Fahrenheit 451, That's right. uh, you're spreading it out with this Big Read. Explain what the Big Read is all about. Sure, the, the Big Read is a National Endowment for the Arts. People are familiar with that. Mm -hmm. uh, opportunity through a, a grant uh, program that they have to secure the resources to have a community university partnership uh, that's built on a conversation about one of the, the kind of classic American books. When you look at the list that they say, you know, here's the list you can pick from, it's sort of the books we'd all recognize one of which was Fahrenheit 451, which we were already going to use for our common reader as a part of our QEP. So 
we, we sort of doubled down. We said, what a great opportunity to really expand the energy and, and, and do something uh, in the community as well as on the campus. And that's part, but not all of the reason why Fahrenheit was such a good choice. And now uh, talk about the fact that uh, it's in, to encourage reading. And so uh, what are you going to be doing to help encourage reading and help spread the, the message of reading and why is it important to do that? Sure, the NEA, the NEA Big Read is very much about reading and why reading is important and why books are important. And important, you know, ultimately at a level that deals with what enlightened uh, uh, citizens do when they engage in self-governance, right? Which is what we're mm -hmm. about. So it very much is about having a conversation about reading. And so we, we've got a series of events planned. And, you know, if you're not careful, all the events will come off as, well, today we're going to read a book, which for a lot of people who don't read a lot, that sort of sounds like a turnoff. Mm -hmm. So we've got a film series, for example, that have movies that are uh, thematically related to Fahrenheit 451. We're actually going to show the movie Fahrenheit mm -hmm. 451, okay. which is uh, one of the films. Uh, but there are a series of other films. Uh, the one that I'm hosting is called Girl Rising, really about the empowerment and education of young women, particularly in underdeveloped and third world countries and what's happening there. Uh, in the Name of the Rose, which a lot of people will mm -hmm. recognize. Some of them are a little lighter. Educating yeah. Rita with Michael Caine okay. will be a fun one. So, uh, we've, got a, we've got a partnership with our anti-bullying 5K run under the heading, Don't Judge a Book by Its Cover. Uh, we've got Banned Book Week next week. We've yeah. got uh, Used Book Sale. We want people to clean out their garage and give us some books. We're going to take the proceeds from that and we're going to use it to buy books for kids. Uh, we've got a children's book festival that will be coming up and lots and lots of discussion groups. The goal of this is structurally we've got some set for people to come and participate mm -hmm. in, but we want people to pick up a copy of the book. It's a free copy. Uh, yeah. That's what we do is give away books and then find other people that uh, want to read it and have a conversation and talk about what reading and books and ideas and discussion are all about. And of course the book, uh, you, you talk about open discussions and you've got a book here that's pretty much about not having open discussion. Yeah. So is it, is it a happy coincidence that you pick a book like this, uh, this kind of the anti discussion type to topic for you? Sure, there. what a perfect book to pick, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're familiar with the book, and this is sort of a little spoiler alert, if you haven't read mm -hmm. it, and you should, uh, in this future that Bradbury envisions as he writes it 60 years ago, firemen aren't called to put out fires, they're called to burn books because the, gov the government is afraid of what books and ideas mean to the, to the citizens. And it very much is the story of a fireman who comes to that moment and says, books must be important. I've been taught that I have These to burn them, but they're important. And what follows that as well. And so our, our goal is to invite people in all the different ways they can be invited into the schedule that we have that they can find on our Facebook mm -hmm. page and they can, uh, they, can, uh, they can attend the events, whether it's films or discussion groups or what they want to self-initiate. The goal is Troy University, City of Troy, that community of people talking about this book, books in general, reading, ideas, why all those things are important. And of course, uh, promoting reading and having some fun ways to promote reading. Absolutely, and we'll so. have t-shirts that we're gonna give mm -hmm. away with the books, bookmarks, buttons, which I brought, to, uh, I brought for you today. Answer. Yeah, you can have those. Have and, buttons, uh, uh, yeah, some uh, of them talk about, I read banned books. Yep. And, and the thing is, when you look at a list of banned and challenged books, mm -hmm. you're gonna find you probably read them too. If yeah. you read Hemingway or Steinbeck or Harper Lee, or any of the classics end up on those kind of yeah. lists that are that are challenged. Well, yeah. and you know, someone has a chance to wear a button that says, "I read banned books" out there in the community. So, uh, you know, great way to start a conversation. And, and you know, this is one of those lists, so maybe the yeah. chance to read this one as well. Yeah, Bradbury's so. on the list too. Well, uh, thank you for uh, bringing the books and the buttons, and uh, good luck with the big read. And hopefully, uh, we'll encourage some people out there in the community to pick up a book and read. Thanks for joining great. us today, and thank you for joining us on today's edition of Trojan Talk. And that's what happened on the fourth week of September 2014. To find out what's happening throughout the week, you can tune in to Troy Trojan Vision News at 5, 6.30 and 10.30 Monday through Friday, or follow us on Twitter at Troy TV News, or like our Trojan Vision fan page on Facebook to see links from online content from Troy Trojan Vision News. We hope you join us again next week for another edition of Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. Have a good week. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. Every day, kids witness bullying. For you. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Here's your check. Oh, you, you did.
got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No, no. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving.